Hello, hello. Welcome. Hope you're having a great day, wherever you are. My name is Nicola. This is an all levels practice. I teach mirror image. So when I say left, it's your left. And I will be switching my orientation on the mat throughout the practice just to give you a better visual of what's going on. You do not need to switch around. We'll begin as we always do with our centering. So just finding a comfortable seat on the mat. Beginning to slow down, deepen the breath. As you inhale, allowing belly to soften and expand. And as you exhale, just drawing belly button in towards spine. So using your abdominal muscles to help fully exhale. So obviously the core is working a little. We're sitting nice and tall, but try to relax what you can, the shoulders, the jaw, the face. Begin to scan your body, checking in with yourself. How do you feel today? What do you need from this practice? So as I do always stress, you are your own best teacher. You know your body better than anybody else. So as we move through the practice, constantly evaluate, listen to your body. What is it asking for? What is it telling you? listening to my cues to move through the practice but modifying in any way you need to make this practice work for you. You might like to set an intention for your practice. Just see what comes up. Just repeat that to yourself a few times just to seal it in. <clears throat> if you find yourself losing focus, the mind wandering throughout practice, you can use that intention or use the focus on the breath and the body to kind of bring you back and keep you present. One or two more of these slow, deep, fuller breaths. And just allow the breathing to happen naturally without really kind of paying too much attention or trying to exert control we'll just remain seated and just begin to circle the upper body around just loosening up the spine the shoulders the head and neck really doesn't have to look a certain way don't overthink it just kind of beginning to move at some point pause just Circle in the opposite direction. And then we'll begin to transition this into some seated cat cow. So as you inhale, bring your chest forward, shoulder blades draw together, looking up into cow posture. Exhaling to cat, you'll draw in the belly button, round and separate the shoulders, tuck the chin. Just 
just moving with your breath. Continuing the warm up of the spine. From neck all the way down to tailbone. One more. And try to hold that cat stretch. So belly button is drawing in, upper back is rounded out, chin is tucked, breathing into the upper back. Try to take as full of breaths as you can. Reach the arms forward. Grab your left wrist with your right hand. Kind of pull that wrist over to the right. Feel that expansion in the left back of the shoulder. back through center, grab your right wrist, pull over to the left, come back to center, and then find a nice tall spine, reaching your hands up, try to keep shoulders down. One more inhale, as you exhale, find a twist, twisting to your left side. And as we hold our seated spinal twist, you want to keep a tall spine, number one. And as we pause and hold and breathe, you want to sit taller with each inhale, twist a little more with each exhale. Next, inhale, reach up in the center. Exhale, twist to your right side. Try to keep the shoulders down away from the ears, sitting tall. You can use your arms to aid the twist, but you also want to use your core muscles. One more breath, and then release the twist. So I'm going to turn, you can stay as you are on your mat. <clears throat> we'll come into stack pose, so sitting nice and tall. You do want the core engaged to help sit you up tall. Try to really flex the feet, engage the quads, draw the kneecaps up. Maybe your heels will come off the mat. Arms are relaxed. Dandasana or staff pose. We'll begin to come into a forward fold from here. So maintaining that flat back, that long spine, hinge forward. You'll kind of reach a stopping point. If hamstrings are super tight, bend your knees. You can always put a rolled up towel under your knees at any point if that helps you. If hamstrings are really tight, you can also take my loosening up your hamstrings practice, which is also on here. So keeping a long spine, see if you can gently ease further forward every breath or so. So again, the inhales allow you to elongate or make room. Exhales allow you to soften and deepen. Can 
always work on this, maintaining a flat back, or you can go ahead and round your spine if that's available to you. Rounding the spine isn't necessarily better. It doesn't get you really deeper into the posture. This is more about low back and hamstrings. Rounding the spine will just bring the upper back and neck into the posture and just change it a little bit. So what do you need? What does your body want? What would feel good to you? That's where we should be. That's how your head should be thinking, not, oh, she's folding forward more than me. I'm no good. Everybody's good at yoga. If you, as long as you listen to your body and it feels good. So don't force, don't stress. Just lose yourself in the practice. Inhaling, we'll come up. Bring the hands behind us. You can point the toes or keep the heels flexed. We'll come into a reverse plank. If you do prefer a re reverse tabletop, I cannot speak this morning, uh, then bring your feet flat on the mat and you can push the hips up. If you are keeping straight legs, it will be a little more challenging. Lifting up, really bring your chest up or push the hips up if you are doing the reverse tabletop. Maybe we can take one more breath here. Slowly lower. We'll find a straddle position. So bringing the legs out wide. Just as we did before, spine is nice and tall. Begin to hinge. See if you can flex the feet and kind of open the legs, like pull your toes back. Be kind of exposing and working the inner thighs here as you hinge forward. So we will stay here for a few breaths. Give you some chance to kind of sink into the posture. If you really want to work on a particular posture, you do have to hold for a couple of minutes and practice it regularly. This practice is not about that. It's about giving you kind of the full body experience. Not working a particular posture. But you can always put me on pause or work on a posture if you want. Maybe just take a couple more breaths here. side bend. So it doesn't really matter which side you choose first. What's more important is that instead of collapsing down and trying to reach for your foot, picture there's a beach ball here and you're just leaning up and over and then really reach your fingertips as far as they'll go, kind of towards the corner where the wall meets the ceiling. So we're not craning and stressing to reach our foot. It's not that kind of side stretch. If that comes easy to you, feel free. <laughs> Come on, up in the center, we'll reach up nice and tall. Take that side bend to the opposite side. So think of it more as expanding one side of the ribs as you crunch the other and really reaching the fingertips. Just getting a good stretch from the top hand all the way down to the Hip. One more breath. Come on up, and we'll just come into a bound angle or Baddha Konasana. So, if you have really loose hips, which I do not. You may be comfortable with the heels very close to your body, still maintaining a tall spine and kind of a tip forward to the pelvis. That's a little difficult for me. I really have to pull with my arms. So for me, it's easier if I push my feet a little further forward. That helps me to sit more comfortably. 
keeping a straight spine and then hinging forward. So everybody's body works differently. You know yours, I know mine. So we work with what we have and we thank our bodies for what it's doing for us right now. So don't beat yourself up if you have a goal in yoga and you're not there yet. Just practice. That's why it's called practice, right? Your arms can go wherever they're comfortable. You should constantly be elongating with the inhale, softening with the exhale. And then come on up, we'll find a tabletop position. So transitioning to hands and knees. Trying to align wrists below shoulders, knees under hips. We'll just come in to some more traditional cat cow. Really press your fingers and your hands down into the mat. Try to expand the upper back a little. As you inhale, lower the belly, draw shoulder blades together, looking up. As you exhale, round the spine, separate the shoulders, tuck the chin. You kind of want to use your hands, really pressing down into the mat, and they can help pull your chest forward or push and round out the upper back. So use your breath, find your rhythm. Let's take one more. Finding a neutral spine. Reach your left hand out, palm in, thumb up, extend your right leg back. So we're coming into a spinal balance or a bird dog. You might want to shift a little to even out the weight between your right hand, left knee. Inhale, reach a little more as you exhale. See if you can bring the elbow and knee together and crunch in. Inhale, extend. Exhale. Inhale, crunch. Inhale, reach, reach, reach. Exhale, crunch. Can you bring the knee up a little higher towards the nose, round out the spine? Inhale, extend long and hold. So, option one, you hold here. If you need a break, go back to a tabletop. Option two, bend your back leg. Reach back with your left hand and try to grab your foot. If you can grab the foot, then you can kind of push that foot up and away, creating a nice stretch here. If not, don't overstress it. Just go back to the balance. And if you're not there already, we will release and find that balance. And then bring the hand down. Let's reset, make sure everything is Good. you've got a good foundation then the right arm comes out left leg kicks back try to level off your hips maybe shift the weight a little engage the core breathe inhale exhale crunch really push into that left hand as you bring the right elbow and left knee together inhale extend Exhale, crunch. Inhale, extend. Last time as you crunch, pause. Can you bring the knee a little higher? Round up the spine, push into your hand. Inhale. And feel free to stay here. Go back to a tabletop. Or reach the arm back, bend the leg. Can you grab the foot or the ankle? Breathe. Slowly release. Extend spinal balance one more time. And bring 
the knees down. From here, hook your toes, engage the core, round out your upper back. And you're pressing into the hands, can you just lift your knees an inch or two for a floating tabletop? And breathe. Try not to overthink these postures when we hold. Sometimes it's a lot more difficult just to hold a posture. Focus on your breath or repeat that intention to yourself. One more breath. Slowly lower the knees, unhook your toes, find a child's pose. We won't stay here too long, make it a resting child, just kind of making yourself heavy. And just relaxing down, enjoying the support of the floor. Arms are relaxed. Breathing into the upper back where there's room. And then coming back through tabletop. Hook your toes. One more floating tabletop. Round out the upper back, really push into the hands, draw the core up and in. Try to just maintain that position as you just lift your knees. Breathe. We'll hold this one slightly longer. But if you're ready to release at any time, just bring your knees down. You can always drop your knees down and come back up or just go to child's pose, which is where we will be headed next. How much longer you're thinking? Just breathe. <laughs> One more breath. That's it. Slowly lower the knees. Unhook the toes. Back to child's pose. We'll stay here a little longer. So again, just make this a resting child for now. Just let your arms relax, your shoulders relax. Sinking into the support of the mat. So you can always stay here a little longer in resting child or you can kind of roll onto the outer edges of your arms so your palms are facing in. Press your arms down and then kind of try to pull them apart without actually moving them. This will really activate the arms, the upper back, the armpits, the pecs. You're going to really feel all the muscles turned on. And slowly release the arms back down. And we'll walk the hands over to the left. We'll keep the left hand planted and cross the right hand on top. Then you want to push both hands down and try to bring your head back down. So you're creating a side bend in this child's pose. Sending your breath to the right side, really expanding the ribs as you inhale. And then you'll walk your hands over to the right side. Plant the right hand down, cross the left hand on top, press both hands down. Find your side bend. Feel that expansion, that stretch down the left side. to center take a breath or two here when you 
And slowly ease your way back to tabletop. Bring the hands a little forward of the shoulders here. Spread the fingers nice and wide. Plant the hands down. Hook the toes. Lift the hips. Alo Mukha Svanasana or Downward Facing Dog. So we'll just hold here for about five breaths. So you want to create that upside down V shape. The weight is even between hands and feet, pressing heels towards the mat. If heels do make it down, you can try lifting the toes. Push your chest back towards your thighs, round out the upper back and try to find a little tip to the tailbone. And then breathe. Slowly lower yourself down to a tabletop. So you stay where you are. I will turn just to make this easier to see. You'll take your left foot out to the side. And just kind of rest on the instep or if you can flatten the foot down, that's fine. From here, we'll come up onto the right knee. Just rest your left arm along the leg. And we'll find a side stretch over to that left. So you're stretching up and over towards the extended leg. Again, thinking about kind of a beach ball under your left side or the side that's contracting and then the big expansion in the right side. Come on up and over, planting the right hand down, peeling the left arm off. Option one you're there. Option two, see if you can lift this leg to hip height. If you want a little more, you can bend the foot, reach the hand down, grab for the foot. And if you can do that, then push the foot away, creating a back bend. If you cannot reach the foot, just take one of the other options. Perfectly fine. If you do have hold of the foot, release it. Come on back up. Bring your hands down. So we are going to thread the needle with the leg out here. If you find you don't care for it, it's a very easy solution. Bring your knee back in. Otherwise, we're going to take the right hand out towards the extended leg. So on an inhale, Reach your right arm up and as you exhale, thread it behind the left, reach the fingertips and come on back down. Make sure that your head can rest, hopefully on the mat. If not, you can make a fist with the left hand. If the left hand is free, walk it forward, press it into the mat, creating a little bit of tension and a stretch in the left arm also. If you prefer, you can come up onto the fingertips. Bringing the left hand back down. Inhale, we'll open the right arm and then bring the hand back down. Once more to downward facing dog. So making sure hands are a little ahead of the shoulders. We'll come up and find our downward dog, Alamuka. Five breaths here. It is harder to hold a posture Sometimes the body wants to move and you can honor any movements that want to come up if you want to walk out your dog or come into a three-legged dog. But if you can, try to just hold the posture, be still. Go internally, listen to your body, follow the breath. Tabletop, and we'll do the other side. So 
This time we'll be taking the right leg out to the side. Come on up onto your left knee. Relax your right arm onto that extended leg. Reach up and over. Breathe. Feel the expansion on this open left side. Gradually come on up. So we'll plant the left hand down, peel the right arm open. If you're happy here, stay here. If you want to lift the leg, keep it up at hip height if you can. If you want, you can bend the leg, grab for the foot, and then create the back leg. Wherever you are, take another breath. Release the foot if you have hold. Lower the leg if it's up. Come on back up onto your knee. Bring your hands forward. We'll thread the needle. So, right hand stays planted. Inhale your left arm. Exhale, thread your needle. Settle in, maybe walking the right arm forward, planting the hand down, or coming up onto fingertips. And if you did move the right hand, bring it back onto the mat. Inhale. Twist, reaching your left arm up. Hand to mat. And one last time, we'll go to downward facing dog. Again, we'll just do about a five breath hold here. If you're itching to move, then feel free. Sure you round out the upper back really separate the shoulder blades pushing heels down and that little cow or dog tilt in the tailbone till tipping your tailbone up creating a little sway in the low back as we round out the upper back one more breath here Begin to walk the feet forward, finding a forward fold. Just kind of let yourself hang here, finding a rag doll, if that feels good. So you can maybe grab opposite elbows and just sway from side to side, letting head and neck hang loose. If you want to work a little more on your hamstring flexibility, bring your arms behind you and grab your elbows and then use the arms against your legs to kind of pull yourself more into a forward fold. Tucking the chin, bringing head towards your knees. If you're in the ragdoll, just enjoy that. If you're with me, just release your arms. Let them kind of hang down. Take a breath here. Then bring in your hands to shins or thighs. We'll inhale, come halfway. Ardha Uttanasana or Jackman. So again, weight should be in the heels. You should be able to wiggle your toes. Inhale here. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Jackman. Exhale, Uttanasana. Forward, forward. Do that one more time. 
then we'll find that halfway lift. Finding the flat back, pull shoulders away from the ears, soft bend in the knee, or a generous bend if you need. Feel the stretch in the hamstrings, the glutes, the low back. Breath is moving and flowing. Crown of the head is pointing forward. And then from here, sink your hips down. And bring the arms forward, if you can, Utkatasana or chair pose. So you want to have a lot of weight in your heels. You want to feel as if you're about to sit down into a chair. As you look down, you want to see that your knees are behind the toes. So you don't want the knees poking forward. You want to pull them back. If, um, if arms reaching up does not work for you, then prayer pose is an option. So we'll just hold for a couple of breaths. We'll be adding a twist. So again, sit down as much as you can. Inhale. Exhale. Let's twist to your left side. So you can just open up as I am here or bringing right elbow to left knee. Make a fist. Press your hand against the fist. Can you really squeeze the waist? Can you look up? Take a breath. You really want to focus on your breathing here. Come back to center. Find prayer pose for a breath. I know the legs are <laughs> building heat, talking to you. Let's twist to the other side. Take whichever twist works for you. One more breath. You got this. And then sweet relief, find a forward fold. Woo! Straighten the legs. Just let yourself kind of hang. Maybe you grab the big toes and pull, bringing the elbows out to the sides. Maybe you're just taking another rag doll. And then from here, we'll begin to roll on up. So take your time. We've been folded forward. You don't want to go too quick. You don't want to tweak the back or get dizzy. Oof, and once we're upright, we'll find some sun breaths. So inhale, reach up, press the palms. Exhale, pushing the hands down. So you're not just kind of standing. You're, everything is activated. Push your feet into the mat. Engage the quads so your kneecaps are pulling up. Engage the core, the glutes, all the arm muscles. Push your arms as if you're pushing through something that's creating resistance for you. So you really have to push to get through it. And from here, we'll actually come into the moon salutation. So inhale, reaching up. Grab your right wrist. Bend over to the left. Inhale through center, switch the grab, lean over to the right. Inhale, reach. Exhale, step out to the left. Find a side bend. Inhale through center, bend over to the right. Inhale, reach. Exhale, dive into a forward fold. Inhale, sweep the left arm open. Keeping the right fingertips down. Exhale, bring the left hand down. Inhale, open to the right. And down, big inhale, bringing you up. Make yourself big, take up space, five pointed star. Exhale, goddess. Take a breath here. And then push off that left foot, come to center. Now we lead to the right. Inhale, reach, grab left wrist, lean over to the right, inhale, center, pull that right wrist up and over to the left, inhale, reach, exhale, stepping to the right, find that side bend, 
Inhale, reach. Exhale, side bend left. Inhale, reach. Exhale, forward fold. Fingertips down. Inhale, sweep right arm open. Lower, and then the left. Big inhale brings you up five pointed star. Exhale, goddess. Take a breath here. And we'll push off that right foot. So we'll go once more either side. I won't say too much. We're leading to the left side first. Each movement is linked to a breath. As you forward fold on an exhale, your left arm will open up to a twist with the inhale. Then your right. Big inhale brings you up five points of stone. Goddess, take a breath. Come to center, one last round. Exhale, forward fold. Right arm sweeps open with your inhale. Then the left. Big inhale brings you up. Five pointed star one last time. And finding goddess. Let's stay here for an extra breath. And we'll push it off back to center so from here we'll come into some balance so we'll begin by balancing on the left foot come onto your tiptoes of your right foot engage the core press the palms we'll bring this right leg up so the knee is kind of out at hip height and you've got a 90 degree bend in the leg. From here, we'll begin to extend the leg. Now see if you can kind of pump the leg up just five times. Five, four, three, two, one, and then sweep this leg behind you and begin to find warrior three. So you want to try to keep hips level with the mat. Wobbles are normal, falling in and out of balance is normal. Try some different arm positions here. Do you want to reach your arms out at shoulder height? Do you want to reach them back? Tuck them alongside you, maybe bringing them forward. Ooh. Come on slowly up and we'll find tree pose. So if you can, you'll bring your right foot somewhere along the left shin. If you want, you can bring the right toes down, kind of like a kickstand. Play with some different arm movements. If you really want to get crazy, you can try looking up. That will challenge your balance. But it's okay. Gradually bring yourself back to center. Maybe give your legs a shake as we prepare for the other side. So planting your right foot down. Think about sending roots into the floor. You're on your tippy toes of your left foot. Engage the core, draw that belly button in. Find a strong support here. Press the palms. Bring that left leg up. Keep breathing, really engage the glutes and the quads on that standing leg. Extend. 
Extend the left leg. Ooh, can you pump it up? Five, four, three, two, one. From here. Ooh. See if you can swing that leg back and find Virabhadrasana three or Warrior three. Again, once you're relatively stable, see if you want to play around trying different arm movements. Breath is flowing, slowly, see if you can make your way to tree. Any version of tree goes, it can be a little sapling with your ball of your left foot down. Maybe you can bring the left foot all the way up to the inner right thigh. So take it where you need it to go. Reaching up, maybe looking up. From here, gradually making your way out of this tree. Oh, shake the legs, shake the arm, shake it off. Be like Taylor, shake it off. From here, Stepping to the front of your mat. For now, rooting both feet down. Begin to sink down into Utkatasana. Begin to lighten the weight on your right foot. So you're taking all the weight into the left. Come onto the ball of the right foot. Lean forward maybe a little more. Pick up the right foot. Can you step it back? Can you take your time? Stepping this foot back. Make your way to warrior one. Take a big inhale breath. As you exhale, hinge forward. Sweep your arms behind you. Kind of press the palms toward one another like you're holding like a ball in between your hands. Do you stay here? Do you continue to hinge forward, bowing the head, coming into humble warrior? If you want, you can interlace the fingers, push the arms back, or just keep the arms pressing towards one another. Big inhale brings you up. Exhale, warrior two. So, excuse my back. <laughs> Sorry. So, take a couple of breaths here. See if you can really sink into that front knee. And then from here, begin to straighten your front leg. Keeping both sides of the waistline wind. Mill the arms, hinge at the hips. Coming into trikonasana or triangle. From here, keeping legs straight, reverse the arm position, sweeping the left arm up, palm faces back, reverse triangle. Slowly bend into your front knee for a peaceful or reverse warrior. And then we'll come to extended side angle, so bring the arms through shoulder height. Hinge forward, elbow to knee, back arm reaches overhead. If you want a core challenge, you can release that bottom hand, reach it down, reach it forward, maybe even reach it parallel with your top arm as if you're holding a ball. Breathe. From here, we'll transition to a runner's lunge. So bring your arms down, turn your torso to face your front thigh and release the back heel off the mat. Sink down, frame your front foot with your hands, maybe heel toe that foot out to the side. Allow the hips to sink, keeping the spine long, plant your right hand, peel the left arm. So you're twisting towards 
that front leg. Bringing the hand down, it's a big step forward. Roll on up, reaching up on an inhale, sinking down, back to Utkatasana. Release gradually the weight from that left heel. Bring a lot of weight into the right and you lift the leg and you extend the leg back. And you slowly set that leg down, finding warrior one. Begin to hinge forward, sweeping the arms back, flying warrior, or bowing a little more for humble warrior. Inhale, come back up, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. I feel better on this side. I'm not showing you my back. Take a breath, can you sink a little more? Then begin to straighten your front leg. Trikonasana or triangle. You can always grab your front shin with that right hand or just reach the hand down. Be conscious of keeping that top shoulder stacked above the lower shoulder, both sides of the waist long. Big inhale breath, reverse your triangle. Bending your front knee, peaceful warrior. And then we'll find extended side angle. You want to release this lower arm. You want to reach it out in front of you. If you want to Parallel it with your top arm. Can you sink a little lower? Take a breath. And then from here, bring your arms down. Face the front of your mat. Release your back heel. Sinking down, maybe heel toe this front foot out. To give you more stability, sinking the hips down for runner's lunge. Option to add the twist, planting left hand down, peeling right arm up. And from here, lowering that hand. This time we'll just step back to downward dog. Lower onto your knees. And then come on down onto the mat. So you'll have a seat in the center of your mat. And you'll roll on down. You can take your time if you would like to challenge the core otherwise just roll on back we'll be coming into a full body stretch reaching arms overhead make yourself as long as possible then bring your arms down by your sides bring your feet flat on the mat perhaps like bringing your shoulder blades a little bit underneath you. Come into a bridge pose. Lifting up your hips, pushing in to your feet and your arms, engage the glutes. One more breath. Can you bring the hips just a little higher? And then slowly lower down. Briefly hug your knees in. Maybe bring your head up into a kind of a little ball here. Then release down, bring your left foot down, right ankle. Rest just below left knee, flex your right foot, push your right knee away. You want to maintain that feeling of pushing the knee away as you pull in the left knee. So coming into figure four stretch, feeling a bullseye sensation in the right hip. Send your breath there. Down. 
Slowly lower your left foot. Just cross your right knee over the left. Arms come out to shoulder height. Perhaps shifting your hips slightly to the right, bringing your knees down to the left. So you want to try to keep your right shoulder connected to the mat. Turn and look over towards the right if you can. And maybe even using your left hand on top of your left knee, right knee, to push your knees a little closer whilst keeping the right shoulder grounded. Slowly roll onto your back and we'll find that figure four stretch the other side. So right foot comes down, left ankle on right knee, flex your left foot, push your left knee away. And then begin to lift up the right foot, drawing the right knee in, pushing the left knee away, finding that stretch that works for you, breathing into the bullseye of sensation created in that left hip. One more breath here. Then slowly lower your right foot, cross your left knee over your right, arms to shoulder height, shift hips a little to the left, then knees come down to the right, gaze turns to the left. So you want to maintain contact with your left shoulder on the mat. And if you want a little deeper twist, you can bring the right hand on top of your knees and kind of push whilst keeping that left shoulder grounded. I'm going to take a couple of breaths here. And if you love twists, you didn't get a long enough of a twist. We're coming into Shavasana next. You can always twist for Shavasana if you do need a little more. Otherwise, just roll on to your back, on cross your legs. You can keep the feet flat on the mat, knees resting against one another, or maybe soles of feet together, knees fall out for reclining bound angle. Or perhaps you just extend the legs long, arms by your side, maybe tucking shoulders under. Letting arms and legs roll out to the side. Once you are in that comfortable position, just relax. Scan your body, check in with yourself. What can you relax? Where can you release and let go? Take an inhale breath. As you exhale, just sink down, get heavy, sinking into the support of the floor. Just let the breath happen naturally and try to keep the mind quiet.
just begin to make some small movements, bringing your attention back to the present. Maybe taking one more full body stretch, or perhaps rolling onto one side and taking a few breaths there. And then whenever you're ready, just making your way to a seated position, taking your time. And once you're there, just sitting quietly with eyes closed or with a soft gaze. Just holding on to that sense of peace and calm and relaxation. Take an inhale, breath, reaching up, bringing hands together and drawing them into heart center. Thank you for joining me in this practice. I hope you enjoyed practicing as much as I enjoyed teaching you. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.